Hello everyone and welcome to the very first episode of Life of a Singer. My name is Michela Jegwe and I will be your host on this show. Here at Life of a Singer, we want to learn about your private lives, your experiences, your projects, and your future dreams and aspirations. We love the conversations that we have when we meet, and we hope that we can have them here on this show and interact together on this show. My very first guest on the show is a fine tenor with a passion for classical, opera, hymns, and Christian music. He's a member of the Greater Accra Mosque Choir and the Holy Spirit Cathedral Youth Choir. Please help me welcome Mr. Kelvin Ohondo. Thank you, Kelvin, for coming on the show. Thank you for being my very first guest. Oh, you're most welcome. Okay. Yeah. Did I get your name right, though? Well, a whole lot of people uh, sometimes don't get the name right, okay. but uh, it's Kelvin Ohondo. Ohundu? Yes. Where are you from, Kelvin? Oh, I'm from Benue State, Nigeria. Nigeria. Yes. Oh, right. How long have you been in Ghana? I've been in Ghana for like um, four years and five months now. Wow, that's a long time. Oh, yeah. No wonder you can speak our local dialects very fluently. <laughs> <laughs> well, how true is that, Kelvin? Oh, oh it's <laughs> not... To say, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, at least we could do that oh, one. But the... tell me how you're able to fool us that you understand what you're, you're, you're singing. How are you able to do that? Because I see you singing in so many different languages. And for some reason, you're able to make us feel like you know what you're singing about or you're a native speaker of the language, whereas you're not. How are you able to do that? Okay, the thing is, uh, it's very it's very simple. Okay. Uh, it requires a lot of uh, practice, okay. a lot of rehearsal. Um, at home, even at work, even when you are walking, uh, the, the words should be made, you should be meditating on the words mm -hmm. you are going to sing. And then you should also um, know the meaning of what you are, you are going to sing, okay. you know, when you know the meaning, I, I, I think it, it helps. It goes a long way in helping you trying to understand the music and trying to, and try and for you to try to convey it to your audience. Yeah, you understand. So when when I take and when I take a piece, an Italian piece or a French piece, I look at something. I look at like Amaze Amis. Okay. Which is a French piece. A piece I, look, I know you love singing. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> very well. So when I look at it, I, I look at what it's trying to say. So uh, I know I, I understand uh, from my little knowledge of French from primary school and uh, from secondary school. Uh, I look at the words. Amaze me. What amaze me? It means my friends. Come on, my friends. You know. I look at it and then I try to, uh, I try to relay it, relay it like when I'm performing. Yeah. So I get these words. Like I, I, I chew them. Like chew them. yes, <laughs> I chew them like uh, like English. I okay. read them like English. So when I'm when I'm done chewing them and then reading them like English and then trying to put it in my head, then I listen to the proper pronunciation of these words. That's important. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very important because you might have someone who is a uh, who is from a French country, or you might have someone who have someone who is from an Italian country mm -hmm. who is listening, and then you need to sing the words rightly. Yeah. correctly yeah. yeah sometimes um you might not get it rightly but uh i know your first performance you, you might not get it rightly but the second performance you should get it rightly so nice. it means constant rehearsal yeah constant practice yeah. look at the words try to get them very well know the meaning of what you are singing because that will help you yes. to be able to relay it to your audience. Yes, that's very good advice for all of us. I, I hope that we have picked something from Kelvin. Now you mentioned Amezami. That mm. is one classical piece that I know you love singing so very much. Tell me how you started singing classical pieces. I don't think you just got up one day and started singing a very, very difficult piece like Amezami. How did you get to classical music? Like, give me a little, you know, background to your singing journey. Okay. Um, I started um, classical music not long ago. Okay. Yeah. I, if, if I can recall... Correctly, I started classical music like eight years ago. Okay. Yeah, eight years ago. What was ago. the first song you sang? Do you remember? Oh yeah, I I remember. Oh. Um, it was um, 
Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, from, Amen. Yes, from Handel uh, Maccabees. Okay. It's a bass solo. I see. And actually, I started as a bass singer. Okay. Before I developed love for tenor. I and see. And then I moved to the tenor. I see. So that was my first solo wow. I did as a singer. It That's was lovely. Oh, it was wonderful. It that, was wonderful. That is lovely. Oh, yeah. Now, I don't know. You have you said you have been singing for like eight years, classical music yeah. for like eight years. Now I'm interested in how you're able to do all the things you do when you're performing. When you're performing, Kelvin, I don't know if you know that your hands are doing so many things, your face is doing so many things, and your gestures, they go a long way to help us understand what you're doing. Mm. How did you learn all that? Where did you learn it from and how did you perfect it? Tell us about okay. that. Okay, they often say uh, music is art. Music is art. Exactly. So, uh, therefore, if music is art, um, it means everything. Music should be about emotions. Yes. Should be about expressions. Okay. It should be about different things. You understand? So, if I pick a song today, I'm trying to sing a song, and my audience are here, there are people that don't understand what I'm singing. Mm -hmm. I should be able, through my expressions and through my emotions, to be able to translate to them what I am doing. Yes. Okay, let me give you an example. Okay. An example of um, The Barber of Seville. Okay. It's one, one song I love so much, The Barber mm -hmm. of Seville. Uh, it's, it's a song that talks about he he he's uh, the la, the factotum of the town. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, we we actually said lago lago factotum de la chita. Okay. You understand? So he now he's we're going the, to Italian, huh? <laughs> oh my yeah, God. we're going. There. So so he is the factotum <laughs> okay. of the town. You understand? So um, when I am singing that song, I know like like I, like like I earlier said, music is art. Now that is opera, yes. and you know you know opera when in in Europe mm -hmm. we act it. Yeah. So, if I am singing this song here, and it is not an opera stage, yeah. but it is somewhere else, I should be able to translate it to someone who doesn't yes. understand the words. Yes. So, if you see me sing sing um, the Barbara of Seville most of the times, you you see me with my comb. <laughs> Barbara. Now, yeah, so it get it gets at a certain point in time. I bring out my comb, yep. and then I try combing my uh, combing my hair. Mm -hmm. Now, someone someone will literally understand that this guy is trying to talk about his hair or yes. trying to do this thing. So if I if if I have a scissors, I have a comb. So I'm trying to comb my hair. I'm trying to do something. So the audience, they are able to understand that this guy is talking about something about his hair. Exactly. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I am able to translate to them yes. that what I am talking about is my hair. hair. <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> exactly. So I have been able to, I have been able to pass a message across to them that what I am singing mm -hmm. is about my hair. Yes. You understand? Yes. So that is it. I love I love the fact that you said that music is art yeah. and I also love the fact that you say that if the music is going to be taken out of context yeah. I mean like out of the opera in mm. which it is coming from yeah. the people need to understand yes. what you are singing because yes. it's like it's not like you're singing the whole opera or they get to see the whole act what happened before you know yeah. so if you're going to be singing to them just one song from an opera mm. they need to understand exactly. and I, I must commend you on that you do that perfectly um, and so yes I have seen you perform a couple of times with the comb and that is actually nice oh, yeah. so that's very good and very good advice for all of us so for you at home who may not have seen Kelvin perform before you get to catch a glimpse of him performing here on this show so please do well to stay with us till the end of this video and watch Kelvin singing one of his favorite areas now we'll be right back after this short break Thank you so much for sticking with us this is life of a singer and we have been talking to Mr. Kelvin Uhundo Uhundu or Uhundu? Uhundu. 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 Right, Uhundu. Yeah. Okay. And he's been giving us some very great advice on how to be better performers like himself. So thank you so much for coming on the show. You're welcome again. Okay. Now let's continue our conversation. Now last year saw you starting your own program, your own show. Yeah. You were celebrating a particular classical composer. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, Jouch, you know, uh, Rossini. Rossini. Yes. Okay. Um, 
which we're celebrating his works. Okay. I actually love this composer uh, because of uh, his works, uh, the things he composed. And I actually love him for the fact that he loved tenor singers. He did? <laughs> oh, so yeah. I was going to ask you why you chose Rossini. You know, there's so many other composers. Why Rossini? Oh. So now I know. He loved tenors, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. I, 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 don't, I don't know. But from my own view, from okay. my own point of view, okay. I feel he loved tenor singers. Why? Because uh, most of the pieces uh, he composed. Were for tenors? Not mostly for, he composed for sopranos as well, he okay. composed for bass singers as well, but he composed, like he gave tennis the most difficult tax. Wow. Very difficult tax. Now, when you, when, when you look at some of his composition, the high notes, the running notes, and a whole lot of stuff, okay. you know, and I felt like, oh, if, 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 if this is uh, the, the, the thing, this is the thing, then I need to go for it. Wow. Rossini, like it, it, it's something difficult, right? So I need to do something. By this guy. You love a challenge, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. Because one of the very first songs I, I heard mm -hmm. that was composed by Rossini, uh, the, the Barber of Seville. Yes. La Algo Facto Hotum de la Chita. Wow. I listened to that song and I said, Oh, I was going to learn it, I was going to learn it. <laughs> uh -huh. So uh, at a point in time I, I lost interest in in learning it. And then I, at a point in time again I revived interest in it. And then wow. it took me like it took me seven months to learn that song. Wow. That's a long time. Okay, really? yeah, there are some very, very fast words in the song. So, yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Oh, oh yes. my God, oh, my God. Yes. But, this, but this program you had, you called it Kelvin and Friends. Yeah. And you did it with a group of your friends. Okay. How did you choose your friends and how did you assign songs to each of them? How, how did the whole program go? Okay, um, I, chose, I chose my friends based on what I knew they could do okay. and what I knew they could deliver. Okay. If you want me to call their names, fine, I can call their names. Because, <laughs> you better uh, call me first. You're okay. my show. You're Exa my show. <laughs> exactly. So I, 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 there, there is a piece, uh, a piece you did, um, uh, Qui Es Homo. Oh. The one you did with Franklin. Now I feel you're doing this because I say you're my show. Don't worry, no. I can't kick you out. Oh. Yeah, but I, I can't so kick you out. What, when I, when I <laughs> listened to that song, mm -hmm. immediately I listened to that song, I heard Michelle's voice. Oh. And then I heard Franklin's voice. Okay. Okay. And then I said, this is not going far. Mm -hmm. Michelle and Franklin are going to do it. All right. And I'm All going right. to draw them into this program. All right. Now I'm blushing. Can you tell? <laughs> exactly. Blushing. And you could, <laughs> you could realize that on the day of the program itself, mm -hmm. it was in the Catholic Church. Okay. Now, a, 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 I think a girl was outside and she said she was in the grotto, at the grotto. Uh, this, we had the statue of Mary is uh, yes. Mary, our mother of God. She was there, and when she, when you started the quiz at home with Franklin, and as you were singing along, she felt like angels were descending Aww. from heaven. Oh, that is lovely. That oh, yeah. is lovely. So you see, looking at you, then I, I, I looked at Desiree as well. I looked at Samson as well. I looked at Alberta as well. Wow. I looked at Eben as well. I looked at uh, Calvin as well. I, I, I looked at all your voice ranges and I, I, I pictured that these were the perfect singers for a Rossini night. Oh, and crazy. I say, oh yeah, this is Kelvin and friends. Wow. We are going to do this project. Now I am and so pleased it. you chose me. Thank <laughs> you so much. And shout out to all our friends out there, Kelvin's friends and mine. Shout out to you all for making that night such a wonderful one. Now yeah. I want to know if you would have such again and with the same group of people or are you going to be getting, recruiting new people to join you or will we see that again? Okay, so actually this year um, we are going to do... Um, we are going to celebrate another composer as well. Okay. Um, he's a French composer. Okay. Uh, George Bizet. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so it's going to be a Bizet night, okay. and we are praying that uh, we are able to get the support yeah. that we need to be able to put this program together. Yes. Because you know a whole lot of activities have been um, have been dampened by the the pandemic. Yeah. And so when when you go out to meet people for sponsorship. Um, they give you um, problems that 
uh, our businesses yes. are going down and stuff like this. So we are hoping and we are praying that we'll be able to get uh, sponsorship to be able to have this program. Yeah. Yes. And we are, also, we are going to maintain the same caliber of people mm -hmm. that did uh, Erosini Night last mm -hmm. year, except that uh, Eben has traveled to the UK oh. and um, Desiree too will not be part of it because he has, um, he has gone back to his country to do some one or two things. So we'll be drafting in one or two persons to replace them okay. for the show this year. Okay. Yeah. So I get that the aim of Kelvin and Friends is to celebrate composers. Right? Yes to celebrate composers and to be able to help all of us to to project ourselves, our God-given talent, right. you know, because I see that uh, sometimes you don't have to wait for opportunities. Yes. You create them yourself. Right. So I am creating this opportunity for all of us to come and showcase our talent. Wonderful. You understand? So that it shouldn't be, it shouldn't necessarily be that Somebody must, ha must have to organize something and then invite you and say, Michelle, come and sing. Michelle, come and sing. Let's do something together. Eh? So when we come together, we, we are able to do this together as friends. And then when people see, they will be able to recommend us. Maybe you say, oh, okay, today I, 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 I've seen you sing. So can you... I'm trying to get something for you so that you come overseas and yeah. do something, you know. Yeah. It opens up doors and opportunities yeah. for all of us. So that is what I am trying to look at. That's wonderful. You're creating yeah. a platform for mm. us singers. Yes. And you're also challenging us because I can tell you that those songs were difficult. <laughs> they were, guys. They were difficult. And if you were at the Rossini night, kindly leave a comment. Let us know how it was and let us know what we can do better. Kelvin would love to hear, you know, he would love to hear from you. It's been so wonderful having you, Kelvin. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And thank you, thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. We wish you all the very best. And Kelvin and friends, we hope to see you here on the show sometime this year. You can come here to promote, you know, and advertise. We would, would be glad to have you here. So yeah. quickly before you go again, is there anything else you'd like to tell us? Okay, here is some uh, little piece of advice to some of the singers concerning gestures emotions and expressions now before the advice i want you to go on youtube and type the name cecilia batoli and watch her when she sings and how she expresses now a whole lot of you will feel that expressions and emotions and uh, gestures are something that is useless but it is never useless and aside that your expressions and your facial expressions now it is often said the eyes are a gateway to someone's soul to how you look at someone when you perform and how you demonstrate to people when you perform goes a long way in interpreting the music you are singing. Thank you. Well, thank you so very much, Kelvin, for that wonderful piece of advice. I have learned a thing or two from you, and I am sure that our viewers out there have learned something from you as well. So thank you so much for coming on the show, and we look forward to seeing you, and we wish you all the very best in the competition and also in your production. Thank you very much, Kelvin. You're most welcome, Michelle. Thank you all so much for staying with us. It's been a wonderful session with Mr. Kelvin Uhundu. I hope you have learned a thing or two. I most certainly have. Now, please watch out for the video of Kelvin singing one of his favorite areas. It will be up on your screens very soon. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also follow our social media pages, Life of a Singer Talk Show on Instagram and Facebook. Until next time, my name is Mitchell Ajayi. Stay safe, guys.